Disclaimer. This video contains music and video footage that I do not own. A list of credits can be found at the end of the video. This video contains frightening imagery, includes discussion of drug use, discussion of death by train, and house fires, and is not suitable for viewers who suffer from trypophobia, the fear of small clusters of holes. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is not intended for children under the age of 13, nor is my channel. The Child Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA, states that nobody under the age of 13 should have, among other things, a YouTube account. Hello boyos, girlos, and non-binary gender lows, and welcome to another Lost Media video. Interstitial material can be fascinating at times. Some of the things people come up with to entertain or inform people during commercial breaks are really interesting and creative. They're also really easy to lose too as they go on as quickly as they arrive. So today, we're looking at 8 lost PSAs, bumpers, and ads. Two news and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. The Works is an anti-drug PSA made by Film Roman with the help of Eric Radomsky for the Partnership for a Drug Free America back in January of 2002 with hopes of encouraging 6 to 8 year olds not to do drugs. In the ad, a large mechanical figure is seen sitting under a conveyor belt, with the figure being cut open so the viewer can see what goes on inside of them. The belt carries a burger, some milk, some bread, and some fruit into its mouth, with it responding positively to it. Before a spiky ball labeled drugs enters its mouth, in which it loudly breaks down, and a child says, drugs can really break your body down. The ad is notable for its unintentionally creepy nature with the industrial setting, loud percussive mechanical soundtrack, and the massive increase in volume when the figure breaks down. The ad eventually stopped circulating, and although it was documented in many news articles, the full ad has not been found. In April of 2019, Radomski was asked if he had a copy. He said he'd look for one, but nothing was coming down. On April 12th, 2021, a 10-second version of the ad was uploaded to YouTube by GH32143. On August 7th, 2021, a 20-second version of the ad was found by YouTube by Letterman, which includes extended shots and close-ups, albeit the ending obscured by the frame of the decision. This is where it stands today, but I'm sure it'll be found soon enough. Two news and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. Warning, this section is where the type of phobia starts. Please skip to the timestamp on screen to avoid it if you're not comfortable with clusters of small holes. You have been warned. Faces was an advertising campaign made back in November 2005 by the BBC to inform viewers on how to get six extra BBC channels on cable, satellite, and freeview. It was a collaboration between The Mill, Conquer Co., Artem Digital, Red Bay Media, and DFGW. The campaign focused on a large head formed by hundreds of smaller human heads. This was intended to be funny. Many people did not think this was funny. Over 1,300 complaints of nausea, disturbance, and general disliking of the ad caused the campaign to be shut down nearly a month after it started. The ads aired next to shows such as EastEnders, Strictly Come Dancing, and Neighbors. The ads aired during the peak of the day, which according to Google is around 3 p.m. The ads aired for their final time on December 9th, 2005. The original advertisement featured one of the heads morphing into a lion, John Simpson, and William Effing Shakespeare, whilst informing the viewer of six channels. Other ads contain a morphing into Bob the Builder, Postman Pat, and allegedly Fireman Sam. Here are some of the complaints thrown in the ads. Many complaints of effects from some other type of phobia, the fear of blessings and holes, disturbingly psychotic. It makes me feel queasy thinking about it. It made me feel physically sick and not to go out of the room when it's on. Hideous and demonic. I was having dinner when the advert came on and it was all I could do to keep my food down. The images actually made my skin crawl. BBC responded to the complaints as follows. We've been very conscious that some of you just dislike the nature of the trail, although clearly it wasn't our intention to offend. Here's what we know now. Four ads existed during the airing period. The original ad is able to be seen on the Mills website, Stash Animation Magazine, and many other sites. On June 12, 2018, YouTube user Wesley Cracknell uploaded a camera recording of a video tape he had of BBC One from the time, which held the Christmas ad and the female ad with Bob Builder in it. One ad, which allegedly features most of Pat, is available on the BBC Redux website, although to access it, one would need a bbc.co.uk email address, and no one has come forward with a copy of it. Nobody knows for sure if the Fireman Santa ad exists or not. Like the works, I believe the Lost Media community is close to ending the search for these ads. Let's hope they can find them. Two news and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. Valerie, later renamed to Valerie's family, was a sitcom during the 1980s that began in 1986 following Valerie Hogan, mother of three boys married to an airline pilot. The show was a hit with critics and audiences alike, and the second and third season were pretty late. However, the actress for Valerie Hogan, Valerie Harper, left the show after a salary dispute before season three was filmed, which caused her character to be killed off, and the show being renamed to Valerie's family as now her boys were being taken care of by their aunt. The third episode of season 3, entitled Burned Out, featured the Hogan's house burning down thanks to a faulty lamp before staying with their neighbors, the pools, if their house could be repaired. Notably, this episode was aired during Fire Prevention Week, and 
and is sponsored by McDonald's. McDonald's actually created the interstitial fire and safety segments based on the show. The interstitials were only shown once during the episode's debut airing and never seen again. Burned Out is still circulating and readily available, but only one commercial in the lot has found its way online. Tune News and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. Tune News was a series of 26 five minute shorts spanning two seasons of an air and commercial breaks on Toon Disney across the world from 2004 to 2005. The show followed Smokey Silvers, the show's cowboy robot news anchor, as he flies in his club over Toon Town and gives the news. After a short introductory segment, the rest of the episode would play clips from episodes of Cartoon Terry on Toon Disney at the time, and some sort of a new story out of it. Later on, Smokey said to Spike, come onto the show to join in telling the news, which Smokey is at first apprehensive about before warming up to the idea of the episode's following. Toon News later went on to win multiple awards, including a BAFTA. Footage of the series online is scarce to say the least. Here's some assorting clips we have before I get into the news. Discoveries. The introductory segment to the episode in which Smokey receives Spike for airmail, which is uploaded by writer director Kathy McDonald and producer Mark Harrison. A number of assorted clips can be seen in a showreel by animator Johnny Bird from 2004. McDonald's 2014 showreel shows some two news footage of Smokey and Spike in jetpacks. The Portuguese version of a clipboard in cars has been found. For a while, that was it. Then, in an interview, animator Han Park was asked about Toon News, which he said to ask James and Nick about it. Nobody knows who James and Nick are, aside from the fact that they ran line, which Park worked for. Soon after, the first three episodes of the show were uploaded by McDonald to YouTube, and she planned to upload more. She later uploaded episodes 4 and 5 of Season 1, and episode 7 of Season 2. In the three years since then, nothing else has surfaced, and it's unknown if anything will. Two News and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. Frankenfox is the unofficial name given to the set of bumpers that aired on Fox Kids between 1991 and 1992. The ads were a technical marvel and nightmare for the time, being incredibly difficult to produce but highly sophisticated for the time. The bumpers featured an unnamed character that had a stop-motion live-action body and a 2D animated head, which was a fox. That's the name, Frankenfox. The bumpers were short-lived and very obscure as a result. Nobody even really knows who voiced the guy, being speculated as either Richard Stephen Horvitz or James Owen Taylor, with some other guesses thrown in. Mike Casale, one of the animators for the bumpers, was asked about them, and here's what he said. What I remember was that these were produced by the now defunct Colossal Pictures, a Bay Area studio that was very trendy at the time. The technical nightmare was providing a live-action body with an animated head. The man in the body costume, who had a green cylinder covering his head to facilitate the use of the ultimate compositing machine, was taped moving around more or less randomly. This required re-exposing individual frames from the tape as if they were drawings. That was the only way we could get any body sick for the dialogue in action. That was very time consuming. After that was finished, we could go about the business of animated the head. I don't think the character had a name, but the Fox Network and Fox Kids was still pretty new at the time. I forgot who actually decided to use a Fox mascot, but it seems like an obvious idea. I forgot the actor's name. I think the voice was sped up at least 8%, so that makes it even harder to remember. Also, this was almost a quarter of a century ago. Mike Smith was a very pleasant chap and a good cartoonist, but I think his idea of combining a live body with a cartoon head turned out to require more effort than Colossal bargained for it. Since then, over the years, 11 bumpers have been found. Descriptions of the found bumpers can be found on the Lost Media Wiki article from Frank and Fox, should you be curious. I don't want to put them here for time's sake. Nobody knows how many bumpers there actually are out there, so it's possible there's still more out there to look for. Either way, they're quite close to finding this one. Toon News and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. Daft Punk was a French electronic music duo that formed in 1993 and disbanded not too long ago. Around the time of their second album, Discovery, which was released in 2001, Daft Punk began doing ads for Gap, Tsunami, and many other companies. One of these ads, surprisingly, was for the 2002 Winter Olympics. In April 2012, the Daft Club news group, Thomas Ben Galter made a post asking about how to work the contents of a VHS to post online. This is because the VHS contained four obscure Daft Punk advertisements. Not a lot of people showed interest until later on, with YouTube user Full Metal and Boo posted a video of his VHS collection, which included the four ads. In addition, some of the other ads ended up being discovered and uploaded by him that weren't on the tape. Sadly, the Winter Olympics ad was not found and has remained that way since. Two News and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. JBBO, your all request cartoon show, was a spin off of the hit cartoon series Johnny Bravo, which aired for one season from April 2nd, 2000 to the summer of 2001 on Cartoon Network. The show aired every Sunday and allowed viewers to write in to the mail at the Cartoon Network website, voting for which program was to air. It could be anything from the Cartoon Network's library, so long as the episodes were 11 minutes, 
leading to an infamous alleged segment where Johnny decides to play an episode of Dragon Ball Z, which he played at double the speed and commentated it over so that the audience could tell what was going on before he apologized for it. JVBO is notoriously elusive with it being speculated that each episode of the show, to maintain that talk show feel, only aired once. JVBO actually has multiple regional variants, which are even more obscure than JVBO itself. The first is Tune FM, which aired in Poland and the UK and was set in Tokyo, with an almost entirely different format, having Johnny have a co-host in the form of Brack from the Brack Show, Cartoon Godzilla giving the weather, contests and prizes, and even karaoke segments for Brack and Johnny. The only thing recovered from Tune FM was the commercial for it. Next is Viva Las Bravo, a European spin-off of JBVO which lasted from 2005 to 2006. Viva Las Bravo was an entire block in the summer in which Johnny would take votes each and every day for cartoons to be aired in two-hour blocks, wherein Johnny would crack jokes, answer emails, or take phone calls during the commercial breaks. Only a few promos exist in Viva Las Bravo. Interestingly, however, Jeff Bennett is not cited as the voice actor for Johnny Bravo, rather Mark Silk, the UK voice actor for Johnny, which leads to speculation that Mark voiced Johnny in both Viva Las Bravo and Tune FM. The only things available for JBVO are a single episode of it, being the 21st episode entitled President Scooby, which aired on October 1st, 2000, with some promos and a recreation of the Dragon Ball Z incident. Everything else is still a mystery. To News, and I'm Smokey Silvers, also available for children's parties and bar mitzvahs. And now... The moment you've been waiting for. I decided that this time around, I'd save the best mystery for last. Hinogata translated the white people in English as an urban legend traced back to the Japanese website 2chan in 2004. Users on the site believe it to either be a PSA shown in schools or a commercial that aired late at night. Descriptions vary, but follow this general premise. The sound of a railroad crossing sign rings in the background before two white human figures appear. Every two seconds, one fades out before fading back in and alternating between the two. Text shows up on screen saying, every two seconds, someone dies on Earth. Despite numerous search efforts, the commercial's existence hasn't been proven outside of eyewitness accounts. Here's what we know thus far. On 2chan, a thread began about creepy commercials and ads that the users found memorable. One of these posts goes as follows. Post 854, provided by Anonymous. 4, 10, 16, 14, 21, 45. It was this terribly scary commercial, and I still have it constantly left in my memory. There were two white human figures depicted against a black backdrop, and this noise going, God, God, kept ringing. What's sure is the part that went, every two seconds, a man dies on Earth. So after the noise is repeated twice, one of the figures disappears. On the next instant, a human figure returns back to its old place and asks the other one that disappears. It was a commercial with only that repeating over and over for an extended time. The search then began. Testimonies vary from person to person, with some saying the railroad sign was present and the background was sepia colored, while others said the background was a black void. The general time frame of 1993 to 2003 has been narrowed down for when the commercial could have aired. One account from 1999 says, Post 6, Anonymous, 1999-1102, Friday. 132. There's this commercial with two black and white people blinking on and off and alternatively going pawn pawn. Among local PSA commercials, there's many I can't make sense of. However, this claim is not credible as the 2chan thread wasn't archived. The most popular theory about Hidagata was that it was a commercial for an unknown product, especially due to the purported 15 second runtime. The original testimony does not give any indication for what is being advertised, so many theories have cropped up, including a drugstore, Sober Jeans Company, UNICEF or NGO, and the PSA theory. Many theories, however, have been debunked. For instance, the soap company theory believers were able to find an ad similar to Hidagata that wasn't similar enough to Hidagata for it to work. Allegedly, one of them got into contact with AC Japan, a non-profit distributor of Japanese PSAs, who said they had no involvement with an ad similar to Hidagata. Another theory states that Hidagata was made by Tokuyama, which is a chemical company based in Tokyo. A similar ad to Hidagata was reportedly made by Tokuyama all the way back in 1994, a full two years outside of the theoretical time span Hidagata could have been placed in. The ad was supposedly aired in the Yamaguchi Prefecture, and featured a white, featureless figure against a bluish-black background with white balls surrounding them, with text on screen translating to, Chemistry is now in the unknown world. Because of the similarities, speculation has arisen that Hidagata was made by Tokuyama. However, no confirmation of this has been found. Another debunked theory is that Hidagata could have been used to teach children in schools about train safety, which is actually quite common in Japan. However, due to its runtime and purported creepiness of the ad, many disregard the theory that it's anything other than a commercial. Skeptics also believe that Hidagata may be a case of the Mandela Effect, which is a shared false memory amongst a large group of people. Search efforts have spread all over the globe and the internet to find Hidagata, with a 5chan thread dedicated to it. And even though they're at a sea of dead ends, the search is still ongoing, mainly due to substantial discovery in the near future. Only time will tell.
Thanks for watching this video. Do you have any lost media you'd like to see me talk about? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I have to learn about train safety from some Japanese Mario videos, so until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.